So customers started to tell us, we really, really like the fact that with ESX, we can add and remove CPU and memory by putting in new ESXi nodes dynamically and on, on the fly. And for storage, you can do that by adding spindles, and you can add you know, different RAID groups and more LUNs and metal LUNs and all those sorts of things. But it's difficult to add more I.O. ports and capacity in the same way that ESXi does, right? Customers told us that that's what they want. They want the same sort of flexibility. So let me just pop this open. So this is a CX4, one of the small entry units, right? And you can see it's got this modular I.O. back end. The customer also told us, by the way, that they like the Cisco, you know, I want to be able to add more ports to my switches. I can just hot add and remove them. We're like, okay, we kind of get the message here. So this is the one that has both fiber and iSCSI, and I just removed the one gig iSCSI module, right? I have in my dirty little hands here a 10 gigabit Ethernet two port iSCSI module, and I can add that in the same way that you can hot add and remove. It's completely non-disruptive. You can add more I.O. ports, more I.O. density, more processing power, in the same way that's analogous to what you can do with the server and at the network layer. The second thing is that while we obviously are associated with big arrays, this is currently the smallest array that we ship that works as an NFS and iSCSI target. It costs $329, and you can put two terabytes worth of disk in there. So this is an iOmega product, but it's using EMC software to act as the NFS server and the iSCSI target. And uh, we're working to get this on the HCL, but it actually works today. So if you want a cheap and dirty thing to put in home, it's a neat trick. But you know what? This isn't actually the smallest one. The smallest one is this. This is a virtual storage array. And anybody who wants one, you can get them at the booth. Just come on by. This is a Solera that runs as a VM. So even if you have nothing except for internal direct attached storage, you can use this as an option. And deep within the bowels, of EMC engineering, all of our future arrays are being designed first and foremost as a virtual appliance. And then depending on the scale and the target, what's the right place on how to deploy it as a physical or as a virtual, very customer by customer. So handing it back to you, Scott, Thanks, a little bit on vStorage, and then I'll show you some of the stuff that we're doing together on that front. So as uh, Steve Herod mentioned this morning in his keynote, we've been doing a lot of work on storage. There is a, a new version of uh, ESX in the works that will be available next year sometime. And one of the key initiatives that's part of it, part of this uh, virtual data center operating system, is a thing called vStorage. It's a collection of ways that ESX can take more advantage of storage and allow greater, greater compatibility and greater offloads with storage arrays. So one of the things we've been talking about is virtual storage appliances, as Chad just mentioned, which is the ability to run storage array software in a VM, okay, and run it on top of the uh, virtual uh, data center operating system infrastructure. Another equally important thing is our vStorage APIs. This is a collection of APIs that lets functions that we implement in software in ESX, such as redo log-based snapshots or thin provisioning, as Steve demoed this morning, or fast copies with storage vMotion. Storage arrays know how to do this capability, these capabilities with hardware acceleration very efficiently. So what we've done is jointly work to create APIs that enable the usage of array offload functions for those capabilities within, uh, within VMware infrastructure. So that's what vStorage is all about. And additionally, there's also a collection of vStorage APIs around multipathing. Okay? And uh, we're going to show you that as well, being able to run uh, EMC PowerPath within, uh, within uh, the virtual data center operating system for path optimization and selection. We also have space efficiency technologies, thin provisioning implemented in ESX, thin, and link clones, which is the ability to uh, deploy many instances of a virtual machine from one gold master image and was behind the uh, desktop demonstration that Steve did uh, earlier today. Thin provisioning is an important topic. It can be done well in arrays. It can be done in ESX, but it has to cooperate to work well together. And that's part of this vStorage API uh, integration. We've also done uh, more work on performance. Steve mentioned briefly in his uh, keynote this morning, we're actually experimentally up to 200,000 IOs a second, not the 100,000 number you saw before. And uh, that's due to a couple of big advances in our IO stack. We've built a virtualization aware power virtualized SCSI adapter. So instead of doing emulation, we now have idealized SCSI devices in the guest.
Okay? This is similar to what we've been doing for the network for uh, years now with our VNIC, VMX net. Uh, we've also done more iSCSI stack improvements. Enhanced storage vMotion, you're limited in protocols today. We're going to be supporting all protocols and mixing of protocols with storage vMotion. And of course, enhancements in, v in uh, virtual center storage management. We've gotten feedback from our customers that uh, there's not enough visibility into the VMFS layer, in particular within ESX, being able to map between storage LUNs, what's going on in the storage arrays, translated to VMs. So we've made improvements there in virtual center, as well as enable plugins for third-party tools, such as some of the great tools that uh, EMC has put together for drilling down more, more virtualization-aware storage. So that's kind of a, a quick peek at the advances that are coming soon. And I think I will hand it back to you now, yeah, Jen. And, you know, it's cool to see on a slide, but I'm a big believer in seeing it. So we're very happy to be demoing this. And by the way, uh, for certain customers, you know, if they're, we're actually even accepting some beta customers for this 